Hey everybody, it's Neil Parfit here. Uh, this is video number three, the unofficial ER301 sound computer getting started manual. So, first two videos I sort of went over basic navigation, how to insert and remove units, uh, get a, an audio signal from outside the 301 into here, processed and back out, as well as controlling some parameters on those units from external CV and gate. Uh, also showed you how to use the sample recorder, the six track recorder, sorry, um, just to record some raw audio and then reintegrate it back into some sounds. Um, so today, let's talk about making a really simple synthesizer voice. Um, before I started this video, I recorded some basic waveforms from a Piston Honda MK2, and I've decided I'm gonna use that as my oscillator source, and then I'll show you how to integrate a VCA and an ADSR into that uh, to create a playable voice using an external controller. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to use the Sputnik keyboard here, and I have an arpeggiator set up and some CV stuff set up. So I'll show you what I've done, and I also have a few LS1 light strips for additional control. So let's get started. So just like before, you have four sort of tracks if you're set up in mono that you can use to have different processes. Um, in my case, I'm wired up. I'm going to use track number one. And here we go. So what's the first thing you want to do? Let's insert a unit. So I'm going to insert a sample player because basically I'm going to load in something that I've done already. So playback, it's like a rompler, I guess. Sample player. Here's the same interface as video number two. Um, first thing we have to do is add a, an audio file into this. So I'm gonna go menu, actions, choose a sample. I've already loaded these files into the sample pool, but if you actually had to from scratch, you'd just go to the admin area and you'd go to sample pool and you could load them in. But I've already done that just to save time. So I'm gonna go back to the user area I'm gonna go choose sample. It's showing us the pool. I'm gonna pick this one. I should have named it something good. Um, instead, I've called it save 20, which is sort of useless. So you should get in the habit of labeling your files so you're organized. And once you have hundreds of files in here, you're not sort of hunting around trying to figure out where your stuff is. So I'm gonna use the save 20. I'm gonna hit enter. And right away, it's within the sample player, but can't hear it yet because if we go to pitch view, the speed is set to zero. Um, so we have to bring this to something beyond zero to start the playback head. So check this out. If I if I set this to one, it's normal playback speed, like 48K. So take a listen. Right, so if I set that to two, it's an octave higher. There we go. So here is our source oscillator in this example. And immediate af immediately after it, let's insert another unit and I'll add a VCA. So like any VCA in the modular world, if you have no CV connected to it, under most circumstances, the tap is closed. It's not gonna let any audio through until you control it from an external source. So let's do that. So VCA, let's go to our level. And right below here in this little screen, here's our usual input assignment for external CV. So I'm gonna hit this part where it says empty. And I have my gate set up for um, A1 is the, the gate from the Sputnik. So I'm gonna say, a1, and then I'm gonna back out one level by pressing up, and I'm gonna set the gain to one. So I'm touching a key, and it's opening it. But that's just a straight on and off gate. That's not really too useful for most musical applications like playing a keyboard. So let's go back in here, 
And right after the gate, the A1 input, let's insert another unit here. I'm going to insert, this is where I'd add my ADSR. So that gate from A1 is now going into the ADSR and triggering it. So now, let's just adjust some parameters here. And there you go. So that's an ADSR controlled VCA within the 301. And this is where it gets interesting because we're already nested in a level because this is, this is within the VCA, but we can actually go another level deeper. So I want to adjust this release time from an external source. Let's say this LS1 light strip, right? So I'm going to hit release. Here's the input assignment for that. So I could go this, that's A3. So I'll just say A3. So that's set. And now we just have to adjust sort of hear it. There we go. And you notice as I adjust this gain, there's like a little thingy on the right hand side showing you where this topmost CV signal will land on that parameter. So you can see it. So I'm just going to create an arpeggiator on the Sputnik just so we have something to listen to. Gonna lower the release a little bit more so it's almost super staccato there we go so this is one half of it so we also have to do pitch so let's go to the tuning of this sample player and there's nothing assigned to that tune so let's go to this and I believe the tuning is a2 coming from the Sputnik. So let's try that. There we go. So right away it knows, it's smart enough to know that it's one volt per octave. So there we go. That's a simple, simple synth voice. I mean, that wave could be whatever you want. I mean, I just picked something really cheesy, but. So let's talk about that nesting thing again. So, so far we've had, um, with within the VCA, we have another ADSR controlled by an external source. What if we wanted to add vibrato to this? So here's one way to do it. I mean, there's no correct way to do any of this. You sort of assign this stuff how you feel. So I'm gonna go to the speed parameter and I'm gonna go within that input assignment. And instead of using an external source, I'm actually gonna insert another sample player. And I'm gonna set the speed to one. And I'm going to go to Actions, I'm going to go to Choose Sample. Earlier on, I recorded a really slow sine wave from a Dixie. I'm going to load that in. And let's see what happens. <laughs> so that's the full-fledged sine wave controlling the speed. So I'm going to set that to the maximum I'd ever want it. Let's say it's that. But now the interesting thing is, after this sample player playing this sine wave, I can actually add a VCA there. And I'll have the level of this VCA. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. Oops. I'm going to go, sorry, speed. There's that sample player for the speed. And let's just double check this here. I am gonna add this LS1, 
which is B1. You can see it on the scope when I play it. And here we go. I'm just adjusting the gain until it works. There you go. So I'm gonna turn off the arpeggiator. Here's my voice. Ooh, it's so spooky. But there you go. So now we have a synth voice uh, with a CV parameter controlling the release time of the ADSR. We have another CV source controlling the amount of vibrato. And we also have CV controlling pitch. And we also have a gate, an external gate controlling an ADSR. So, and we haven't added any effects yet. So here's our sample player, our VCA. After that, let's add a clock delay. And the cool thing now is, I'm actually gonna use that same A1, which is my keyboard gate, to clock this delay, which might have some interesting results if I stop and go. So let's pick that. So I'm gonna turn on the arpeggiator again. <laughs> and just like everything else, these parameters, I can assign additional external CV control. So why not mess around with these divisions depending on what note's being pressed? So I'm going to decide that division will be controlled by A2. We might get some erratic results, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Oops. <laughs> and then after this, I could say, okay, I want to EQ that whole thing. Actually, let's limit it first. As you can see, now I'm starting to navigate around fast because I'm, I'm used to the interface now. So I want to add an EQ, done, up the highs, take out the mids. And after that, I'm going to insert a quantizer, which on an audio signal will actually act more like a bit crusher. Or I can say, you know what, I don't like that, so I can click on the menu, remove, and I'm back to where I was. Anyway, sorry, this last part of the video I wasn't talking too much, but at least you get a general idea of how to use this as a voice. And then on number two, I could do something completely different. I could trigger some drums, like look at all these CVs that I have left over. So I could have this going on number one. I could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could have eight drum triggers on this one or actually 9, 10, 11. I could have 11 drums triggering on number two, and maybe I could use number three and four as a stereo effects processor, getting signal in, processing it through some effects, and then sending it back out to the modular system. So anyway, hopefully that uh, gives you another idea of how to use the 301, um, and more videos to come. Okay, cheers, bye.